uh, a long, long time ago, like this is around um, 600 years after Hijrah, so it's well after the Ghaibah of our Imam, but you know, in the early days, there was uh, a lot of people in north of Iraq who are Nasibi, and many of them still are. You know, like during the time of Saddam, you have these places like Tikrit and all these places. And Mosul was one of these places where there used to be a lot of Nasibis. And the governor of Mosul was a man who was a known staunch Nasibi, meaning he hated the Shia and he hated the Ahlul Bayt. And him and his wife did not have any children, so they made another. And another they made is that if Allah blesses us with a child, then we will kill a Shia. We will get this child to kill a Shia. This was the level of their hatred. Now look at how Allah works. He blessed them with a child. <coughs> so they blessed a child, they call this child Jamaluddin. He was known as Jamaluddin al Musili. <coughs> and he grew up, you know, fine young man, the son of the governor of Mosul and so on. When he reached his early 20s and he was now all, you know, ready and built, his mother said to him, my son, you know, you were born by the barakah of Allah because we made another that if he blesses us with a child, you will kill one of these Rafidis. So now you have to go fulfill our another, go kill one of the Shias. So he thought about it and says, where will I find a Shia to kill? He said, the best way is to get them when they go to Karbala because they all go for Ziyarah to Karbala. So he came south from Mosul and he sat at a crossroad where the kafila, the caravans, because in those days they would travel with camels, right, and horses and so on. So he was waiting for a kafila of Shia to come so he could attack them. He had a dagger. The first night nobody showed up. Second night nobody showed up. This is a documented true story. Because this man, when he converted Jamaluddin al-Musili, he became an alim amongst the Shia. This is his own story. The third night, as he sat there, he saw a caravan approaching from a distance. He saw a kafila. He said, this must be a group of Shias coming back from Karbala, heading in a different direction. I will get them there. He waited, but the caravan was moving very slowly. And suddenly he was so tired, he felt drowsy, he fell asleep. The kafila came, they passed by him at the fork of the road, and they went on. They moved away. When he woke up, he realized, I missed them. This was my opportunity to kill a Shia. And all that he saw was he was covered in dust because when the kafila passed, you know, with their horses and all that, ghubar, they were covered, he was covered. So he went back very disappointed that he missed killing them. He slept that night. He says, when I slept at night, I had a dream that it was the day of judgment. It was Yawmul Qiyamah. And somebody announced and said, bring all the Nasibis for the fire of Jahannam. And he says, we were all brought to the fire and I was one of them. And he says, they started throwing all these enemies of Ahlul Bayt in the fire and they took hold of me, the angels. And I was screaming with fear and they threw me in the fire, but the fire threw me back out again. So he says, now he is reporting this. He says, the angels in my dream ask the fire of Jahannam, Ya Naru Jahannam, he is a Nasibi. Why do you not burn him? And the fire says, we cannot burn him because he is now covered with the dust from the Zawar of Hussein. He is now covered with dust from the Zawar of Hussein. Now, he says, now his dream continues. He says, the angels washed me and removed all the dust from my body and then they threw me back again in the fire and the fire threw me out again and the angels asked the fire and said why do you not burn him now we have removed all the dust of the Zawar of Hussein and the fire said but some of the dust has now entered his heart he has now developed a love for Hussein and because of that, we cannot touch him. When he woke up, he was a changed man and he realized his parents were wrong. 
So he converted and became a Shia. He was a poet. He went to Najaf. He studied Islam. He became an Alim. Then he went for Ziyara of Hussein and he composed a couplet which is written on the Dari of Hussein. And these are the words of this Alim, Jamaluddin al Musili, who was born with the intent to kill the Zawar of Hussein. He composed this poetry. He says, and this is on the Dari of Imam al Hussein. Ida shi'atan najat fazur Hussainan. If you want salvation, then go visit Hussein. Likay talqal ilaha qarira aynan. So that you may meet your Lord with that which will delight your eyes. Why? Fa inna nara lan tamasa jisman. For the fire of hell will never touch a body. Alayhi ghubaru zwar al Hussainan. On which is the dust of the zawar of Hussein. إِذَا شِئْتَ النَّجَاتِ فَزُرْ حُسَيْنًا لِكَيْ تَلْقَ الْإِلَاهَ قَرِيرَ عَيْنًا فَإِنَّ النَّارَ لَنْ تَمَسَّ جِسْمًا عَلَيْهِ غُبَارُ زُوَارِ الْحُسَيْنِ And that is why you're told, if someone goes to Karbala, comes back, try and shake his hand or hug him before he takes a shower even. Because he brings with him a baraka that you don't understand. But the fire of hell understands, that the angels understand. It doesn't matter in this world, but it matters in the hereafter. And we are told in hadith, that no matter how spiritual you become in life, if you die without ever going for ziyarat of Hussein, this will be one of the sources of your regret on the day of judgment. Unless you don't have the health or the wealth, that is a different case. For those the Alul Bayt love their Shia so much, they will come for your ziyarah. But if you have the means and the ability, at least once in your lifetime you must go see Hussein. Because the maqam of the Zair of Hussein on the Day of Judgment is completely different from anyone else. It doesn't matter how great an alim he is or what his level and his 